Thanks, Andy. Morning, everyone. Um, yeah, so basically, I'm going to be talking to you guys about wetland offsets, and I think where we need to be heading in future with these. Um, it's quite a controversial topic, I think, generally, but increasingly the need to use different kind of mechanisms to secure important areas is becoming uh, recognized. So I'm going to be speaking a bit about that today. Okay, so what is the current reality when it comes to wetlands? I mean, I think we know that wetlands are really important ecosystems. Um, and that's been reflected now in legislation, and people are getting very touchy when it comes to developments around wetlands, and that's great. But unfortunately, the current situation is, is not very good when you talk about this ecosystem. They're highly threatened. Um, in a recent study uh, by the CSRR, they found that 48% are critically endangered, and 12% of wetland types are endangered, and that's actually the worst situation of any vegetation types uh, in the country today. So if you talk about any types of vegetation, wetlands are the ones that we should really be most concerned about. Well, I would say so anyway. Okay, and just uh, that graph there just gives an indication the areas in red are, are areas where uh, wetland vegetation types are critically endangered. And you see in KZN, certainly the whole um, southern and western section of KZN in particular, uh, wetland conservation is really required. Okay, I think unfortunately we also lack clear policies on wetland loss. So despite good legis legislation, policies on wetland loss and the need to avoid and when necessary compensate for impacts haven't really been formalized. I mean, there is good legislation out there, but it doesn't specifically say this is, how, this is our stand, nationally or even provincially. So there, there's been little guidance on the need for wetland offsets and how these should be applied in practice. I think the reality is, is that a lot of people, a lot of um, organizations and provinces are, are starting to apply things or apply the need for wetland offsets, but how they do it, how it should be applied, how to make sure that those gains are secure is something that is still uh, very tentative. Okay, also current protection efforts are not really well suited to protect key wetland areas. And I've got some reasons for that, for saying that. First, firstly, protected area expansion plans typically focus on remaining areas of large intact landscapes. And those de don't necessarily relate well to where our key wetlands are. Often wetlands are in highly developed areas where the, the goods and services that they're providing are becoming increasingly important. And the reality is, is that whether we like it or not, the funding for protected area expansion is often not where we'd like it to be. So we've got these wonderful aspirations around protected area expansion, but what are we achieving? And is, is that mechanism going to secure our wetlands? I would argue that it's not. Okay, so I would suggest that we need alternative mechanisms and approaches to rehabilitate and protect key wetland resources. Okay, fortunately there have been some responses. Uh, working for Wetlands, probably most of you guys know about, and it is really an excellent program. And it's aimed at rehabilitating priority degraded wetlands around the country. Unfortunately, there's some limitations to that program. So it's got limited resources and it can only focus on a few wetlands at a time. So I do the rehabilitation planning for KZN, and they're only focusing on a handful, like four or five wetlands. And they'll be busy in those wetlands for two to three years at a time. So I mean, when you look at the thousands of wetlands around KZN that need protection and rehabilitation, this program is going to do something, but it's not going to get to where we need, need it to go. Another thing is that once we rehabilitate these wetlands, there's no security and that there, there's no requirement to formally protect those areas. So they're rehabilitated, but what happens if in 10 years' time someone wants to develop there? It's not a very secure investment. Okay, there's also a lack of funding and capacity to monitor the long-term effectiveness of rehabilitation efforts. So what's happening is Working for Wetlands is going in there, they, they're fixing these wetlands, but because they don't have the funds, they kind of walk away. Occasionally they might go back and see whether the structures are still in place, but there's not a formal management and monitoring program in place for the program. Uh, what else is happening? Um, again, Sanby, what they've been doing is piloting wetland mitigation banking as an offset me mechanism to secure valuable wetlands uh, from future mining activities. And really the recognition there has been around in Pumalanga where there's massive coal mining planned. And unfortunately, some of the best um, mining deposits are under wetlands. So the mining sector is really targeting wetlands and they're saying, well, can't we find some way to, to protect and secure wetlands in that landscape? And what they then did is they funded the development of best practice guidelines for wetland offsets in the coal mining sector, which we helped them with. And I just want to give some feedback um, on where that is at the moment and then suggestions in terms of what we should do uh, with that document and with wetland offsets generally. 
Okay, I'm not going to go into detail around these wetland offset guidelines. Um, it's quite a lengthy document, and those that are really interested, um, I'd encourage you guys to obtain that from, from Sanby. But really, what does the, the guideline um, address? First of all, it suggests wetland offset policy goals. And I think this is, this is critical, and that unless we have a policy goal, how do we implement something in practice? Okay, so those are suggested in the document, and we'll wait to see whether the Department of Water Affairs and others takes it on board as official policy in time. What we've also do, done is to suggest ways of standardizing the way residual impacts to wetlands are quantified. So any EIA practitioner, wetland specialists out there, we're saying this is how you should go about assessing losses as a result of development. Then a very controversial issue is, you know, how much is enough to achieve no net loss? So if, say, one hectare of wetland is, is destroyed through a, a development, how much does someone need to compensate for that? And so we've gone through quite a process to develop offset ratios, which basically says if you lose one hectare here, what must it be there in terms of your rehabilitation requirements? Uh, so those guidelines are in the document as well. Another really important thing is, is you know, where should an offset site be located? Um, in relation to where the development took place. So internationally what's been promoted is that you need to have, you need to try and promote what they call like for like. So what you've lost, you try to need to try and recoup or replace through an offset. And the guidelines um, provide some suggestions there in terms of how you go through a structured process to say where that off offset set site should ideally be located. Also requirements to ensure that success is, is achieved is critical. The one thing is saying, you know, this is where the site should be, this is how big it should be. But what about management? What about monitoring uh, and evaluation plans to make sure that those sites deliver what they promise to? And that's also, we start addressing that in the document as well. So I really would encourage you guys to have a, a look at that document if, if this is a field of interest or if you're involved in this sort of arena. Okay, so where to next? Um, I think the first thing that I would recommend is that we refine best practice. And the best way to probably do that is by, by applying it. Um, so Sanby is releasing the guideline in draft format and is requesting feedback so that the guideline can be ref refined as required. So please can, uh, I'd like to encourage the application of these guidelines. So anyone who's interested, please contact Sanby and ask for these. And it really, you know, when any guideline is developed, it's sort of a first stab at saying this is how we think we should do things. But it needs to be tested and with testing we'll be able to refine this better. So please obtain them and see if we can, if we can improve them over time. And then what about policies on wetland loss? Um, interestingly, this year, Ramsar released a resolution actively encouraging contracting parties to formally adopt a no-loss approach. And that's really encouraging that internationally that's being pushed. You guys mustn't, you mustn't settle for degradation of wetlands because they're so important. And they're, they're really promoting that policies are put in place that endorse this international uh, concept. So we need to, be, need to be encouraging the adoption of such a policy at a national level and also developing local policies that further promote this no-loss approach. So Kaysen Wildlife and your guys' recent uh, biodiversity offset guideline, you know, that starts talking towards that. But we really need to be taking it the next step and building it into, into policy, informal policy. Okay, we also need to start thinking and acting proactively to, to secure critical wetland ecosystems. The reality is that there are lots of really important areas out there, and, if, and unless we do something, we're going to lose them. I mean, it's the same with any ecosystems, but wetlands are highly threatened. So we need to prioritize key wetlands for rehabilitation and protection. We then need to use wetland offset mechanisms to fund rehabilitation and management of these areas, rather than just responding in an ad hoc manner in response to development applications. So what happens at the moment is a development comes along and they say, oh, we've got an impact to wetlands, and then they start looking around at the easiest way to find an offset and meet their obligations. It would be much better if we can strategically say this is what we want to try and achieve in wetlands, this is our most important wetland area in a municipality, let's focus on that. The gains are going to be so much greater for everyone. Okay, and I would suggest that wetland mitigation banking provides such an opportunity for us. So what is wetland mitigation banking? Okay, it's a tool pro uh, for providing wetland compensation to offset unavoidable impacts that remain after mitigation measures. Okay, so it's a form of compensation for doing something that you shouldn't really have done. Okay, it's most well developed in the USA where it's viewed as an incentive-based approach to wetland protection. 
in its, in its simplest form, um, a site owner generates what we call compensation credits uh, through the restoration, enhancement, creation, or preservation of wetlands. So they basically do a whole lot of good things to improve a wetland and say, well, now we've got something to sell. Okay, the amount of credits generated is based on the formal protection and how much the site has been improved. So if you take a wetland and you really take it from very degraded to pristine, that's, that's great. That's what you want to see. You want to see significant improvements in ecological condition. And the more you're able to improve the wetland, the greater your, your credits or your money in the bank that you, you're able to sell. Okay, credits are then sold to developers to offset adverse wetland impacts of the, uh, to the same type of habitat elsewhere. And interestingly, in, in the USA, it's regarded as a preferable approach for compensating for wetland impacts. And they've been in this game for probably about 20 years now. Um, and there, there are more than 440 approved wetland banks already in place in the United States. It's a multi-billion rand industry there. Um, but it's very interesting to me that you look at the whole lot of different options for compensating for impacts, they've suggested mitigation banking is the best. And I want to run through some of the, the reasons why that's the case. So really, what are the advantages? Uh, the first is um, consolidation of small wetland losses. So banks would, would make it possible to compensate for small wetland losses, which typically go unmitigated. Um, the reality is that there are a lot of small developments, like, for example, take a, a road upgrade. They cross a whole lot of wetlands, but you know, you've lost a hectare of wetland. How do you force someone to you know, rehabilitate a wetland, formally protect it? It, just, it doesn't make sense to expend a huge amount of effort in a wetland offset for such a small impact. But if a bank is in place and the credits are all there, the guy can basically contribute and say, well, I need to buy one, one credit at a cost of 10,000 or 50,000 rand. And then he's contributed towards a conservation effort that helps everyone. Okay, then mitigation in advance is another key, key benefit. And that the offset bank, you can establish it now for impact that could occur between five and 10 years from now. And that's much better than the case currently where impact occurs and suddenly the developer's got to scuttle around and try and find a way to compensate for those impacts. And by doing that in, in advance, you, stick, you can check that the, that the offset has achieved what it was meant to do rather than going into a situation where you're now trying to compensate but you don't know what the result's going to be. Okay, I think also by, by being able to have some time to do it, you can, you can really plan these offsets correctly. You can identify your sites, so where's your priority sites, and go through a proper planning process. I think the reality is as well is that uh, for small impacts in particular, your offset sites are likely to be very small and fragmented. With a banking approach, you can say, well, let's identify a large system that really has good value and secure that, that site. So I would argue there are higher environmental values as well. Okay, this is really my last slide around the, the advantages. I think also reduced processing time is a, is a key advantage for developers. Often what happens is that the Russian to this EIA process suddenly find that the wetland impacts and then Kazan Wildlife says, you guys have to do an offset. And that's a major headache. I mean, it takes a lot of time to develop, to find the land to secure an area. Um, then, you know, how do you secure this with a landowner? Then you've got to plan rehabilitation. There's another basic assessment required. There's water use licensing. It's a major headache. So instead of the process proceeding very quickly, there might be a delay of a year or two if you're going to get that sorted out before your authorization is, is in place. So a real advantage here for developers. If they can, I mean, they, I would even encourage you know, large-scale developers to think about doing this in advance. And I think they could have, actually have some of the biggest benefits by making sure that they um, reduce the time to get some of their projects approved. And then the reality is that securing a whole lot of small sites is very costly. I mean, it's similar to, you know, to, to protected area expansion. If you... If you can find one site that meets the conservation targets versus 100, the cost of securing one large site is, is much, much more efficient. And I think also having a large site, it allows more, more money to go towards monitoring and evaluation, so you can make sure that your investment is more secure as well. Okay, then banks also provide an opportunity to affect more formal and lasting arrangements for preservation, management, and maintenance of wetland areas. And that's a critical thing. We want these offsets to be something that are secure into the longer term. You don't want them to be something that someone commits to it and then you know, some landowners change, their problems, and then the gains that we, we thought we secured are actually lost in time. Okay, so hopefully those are some convincing arguments to say that you know, maybe we should be trying to do something about 
um, wetland mitigation banking. So really what I want to say today is, you know, let's, ch let's really challenge ourselves to, to pilot this approach. I mean, it's, it's happening extensively around the world. Increasingly, wetland offsets are, are being regarded as the way to go. Um, and I think if we're clever about it, we can really achieve sound conservation outcomes. So, you know, how we do it is going to be interesting, but I'd encourage Kazin Wildlife, other people out there, let's try and see if we can get this thing to work in South Africa. Let's see a few test cases in the next few years. Thanks very much.